So I'm delighted to be spending some time with Jodie Herbeck, and she's just written a book called Rock Your Role as a Sales Force Admin. Everyone's talking about it. It's a really engaging read, um, but I thought it'd be really fun to spend some time with Jodie and find out like, a little bit more behind why she wrote the book, what, uh, what the reactions have been. So Jodie, thank you for joining me. Uh, so first of all, um, who, what was the audience for the book? What made you write a book? Yeah, when, by the way, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Um, so I always say this book is 20 years in the making. It's a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I have spent most of my career on the client side, um, you know, running teams of Salesforce admins. I think they're unsung heroes. Um, and I wanted to write the book that felt like needed to be out there that didn't exist. The book that I wanted to hand to um, all of the admins that joined my team to help them understand what my expectations were. And really what I saw over and over, Ian, is there's so many folks that spend so much time on the, you know, the skills of how to do Salesforce, but they don't necessarily know how to translate that into how, how do, how do, what do I do every day to actually be a good or even better, a great admin and add value to my company. Um, and so that was my first intent. The, the second reason I wrote the book, which is equally important to me, is um, something that we can talk about that I feel very strongly about. I call it the Salesforce admin conundrum, which is the more value that a Salesforce admin provides, the busier they get. And I've certainly experienced it, experienced the burnout. I've probably perpetuated it, quite frankly, as a manager. And um, the idea is, you know, everybody starts seeing, you know, what this tool can do, what this application do, what this Salesforce admin can do. I always say, you know, suddenly the proposal team wants in and the marketing team wants in and you've got more users to support. You've got more functionality to iterate and monitor and oftentimes not any additional resources. So um, I feel very strongly that if I'm going to help people deliver value, I have to also give them tools to deliver without overwhelm. So that was really why this book is in two parts and, and both parts are equally important um, to, as to why I wrote it. Yeah, and I think in reading the book, it's got a lot on what you might call the soft skills. If it is not going to tell you I know, the best way of creating a record type. I mean, there's plenty of, of training material out there. This is this is this feels like an adjunct to the Salesforce admin cert. The admin, the admin cert tells you how to work in Salesforce. This tells you how to work on Salesforce. Yeah, and actually be uh, and and all those skills that go around it. So it's uh, it's a great complement to to what's already out there. Um, and it's not. I mean, it's like nearly two hundred pages. So there's there's uh, a ton of value, but also a lot of your heart's been poured into this. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I wanted to have a lot of specifics and not talk in generalities. So that was important to me. Um, but I think what you just hit on is, you know, it doesn't exist anywhere for people to learn those soft skills or even for people to understand how important they are in the role. And so um, I'll, I'll give you a few examples of, you know, some things that I've heard since I wrote this. And I was like, yes, this is exactly why I did this. Um, somebody said to me, you know, there's a part in the in the book where I go through an example of a, a very common um, use case for a Salesforce admin, which you get an enhancement request, right? Can you add a field? Can you change pick list? Can you do this? Can you do that? And so I go through kind of how do you approach this without being an order taker? And of course, you know very well, because I see a lot of, of the work that you do that talks about you got to get to the why, right? Before we do anything, we, we get to the why. And so I give an example of this in this book. And somebody said to me, he said, Jody, I had no idea that I could ask a question let alone that I should, or let alone what question to ask. And I think that's really common, especially for folks that are, you know, first time in the role or they're in a role where maybe they're a solo admin or they're, you know, working with people that aren't Salesforce practitioners themselves. There's a feeling that, you know, somebody asked me to do something, I have to be responsive. I have to prove that I know how to do this. I have to, you know, be quick and, and get her done. 
And they, it doesn't even occur to them that the value they bring isn't the hands-on keyboards work. It's really helping get to the bottom of what are you trying to do? And then let me marry that with the system functionality to figure out how to best serve that up. And very often, as we all know, what the solution needs to be is usually very, very different than what the ask is. So you talked about the book being really for that newbie admin, the person who's just in the role. But reading it, it feels like it's got a far broader audience. And are you finding that? Absolutely. And by the way, my my ideal avatar was probably somebody that's been doing it for a couple of years, but really had maybe never had that kind of guidance. And really where they knew some Salesforce stuff, they'd been doing it, but just needed some of those kind of tips and tricks to kind of take them to the next level. Um, that said, absolutely. What what I have found, I mean, I, I intended it to have, you know, broader value, but that was my ideal avatar. Um, what's been interesting, though, is how many people have had all sorts of feedback saying, Jody, you should have given this a different uh, title because it's not even just admins that can get value out of it, let alone, you know, where they are on the on the skill level or the experience level. I've had people say this is, you know, I'm a consultant and this has really helped me think about how to ask differently. I've had folks, you know, one of, one of my readers said my wife works on Marketo and she just stole my copy and ripped right through it. So I, I think fundamentally it, it goes to the same challenge, which is a lot of people have learned a technology, but they haven't necessarily learned some of the softer skills that really help us figure out how to apply that correctly and really, you know, uncover the most business value. Um, and and to your point, you know, I, I thought I was fairly progressive when I started writing this a couple of years ago, talking about the role of business analysts, um, because it wasn't really a thing yet. Um, and, you know, certainly we've seen over the last, you know, year as this cert has come into play and having, I think, as well to do with some trends of what we're seeing in the ecosystem in general, that is such a critical role. Um, I do believe that every great admin spends a whole lot of their day wearing the BA hat, right? They wear a lot of hats. And that's certainly one of them is getting to the bottom of really the why behind the ask. Yeah, I mean, I think I heard recently there are 6,000 people have passed the certification. So that immediately goes, well, hang on, it can't be very hard. No, it, it, and it's not that people have trained up to, to do the cert and then they've got it. It actually, they already had the skills. The certification is just validation that actually it's there. And I, I, it, it's hard, I think, when you write a book to get the title right. You could have gone, how to rock your role as anybody. And then it does it's not focused. I think saying as a Salesforce admin, apps it works because... I mean, there are so many people out there. And I think you're helping those people get out of a role of going, I'm an order taker, not out of choice, but because, as you said, I didn't know I was allowed to be anything else. Or you're relatively junior and someone comes to you and says, I'm really senior and I need one of these things. And, and not having the skills to be able to go, I'd love to help you and I'll get the right answer, but but give me some time to actually make sure we get, we get the right thing for you. It's quite hard when you're, new to the role, new to the company or junior. And I think there are some great things in here just to help you ask questions in the right way where you still feel supportive, you're still trying to help someone. It's not like, no, I can't do that. And I always talk about it, saying yes by say, about saying yes, but actually meaning no. So I think th there's some really helpful things here which will help people elevate their skills, elevate their career, but also make them feel more confident because there's also there's the knock-on effect, which is someone says, I want a new, new pick list value. You go and do that and then discover it's not being used. And they come back and go, it was the wrong thing. So actually, it's having the skills you're building here will actually help people feel that they're actually doing the right thing and give them the confidence to start to grow their career. And I think with all the things, it's actually about how do we, how do we build a career path, a career directory for people? Empowering people to step into the power that the Salesforce admin role really has. And um, I, I believe wholeheartedly that the Salesforce admin has the ability to make an extremely big and valuable impact inside an organization. And if you, you know, look at the things that they're involved with, and you know, we really have the ability to 
impact and influence the employee experience, how associates feel about getting their work done every day and how quickly and productive they can, they can you know, do the things they need to do. We have the ability to impact the customer experience, right? Depending on you know, what features and functionality we're using. We certainly have the ability to grow the bottom line, grow the top line. And if you really look at the power that we, we wield, um, I think it's 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 so important inside an organization, and yet a lot of people think that you know I'm just there to run reports, and so that was really part of what I wanted to do in this book as well is really help people understand that done right, this is such a critical role inside an organization, and you have such a an ability to make a difference. Um, but it does take skill. You use that word skill. It's something that people have to be trained on because it's you don't always have a big fancy title that you know other people have and you don't necessarily you know have direct reports so you have to lead and influence and persuade sometimes with some different kinds of skills that very often people haven't been trained on or didn't even know that they needed or could or should um, show inside the organization so that that's really something that's important to me so let, let's pick up on a point there which is you said that they, they're hugely influential, really important. But I think that the title is quite demeaning. I mean, I, I started Salesforce 20 years ago and a Salesforce admin was just that. You, you could add users, you could add do reports. An admin is not that anymore. And an admin is, it, it feels more like a product manager. And I, I, the question is, is it time for us to start rethinking what that role title is? It's funny. I I have a lot, I have a very vested interest now that I've written a book right called <laughs> you know rock your roll as a Salesforce admin to make sure that title stay, stays relevant. Um, but the truth of the matter is, I absolutely think that it's time that we have some conversations as an ecosystem about um, rethinking the role, rebranding the role. Um, I don't get into a lot of that in this book because this book is really focused again on the things we've been talking about, the soft skills. But the truth of the matter is the job is so much bigger, certainly than the name entails, but even just the breadth of skills that are required now um, as the technology becomes more complex and as it has you know, really started moving from a tactical kind of operational tool to a very strategic enterprise platform in a lot of organizations. And just the broad range of things that we are expecting an admin to know. Um, and I always use the terms front of the house and back of the house, hearkening way yeah. back to my, my days in food service, um, where, you know, there's front of the house skills that are all these things that we've really been talking about that are specialty areas in and of themselves, right? Being able to interact with users and map business processes and identify where you can improve business processes and negotiate with stakeholders and manage the project. Like those are all big parts of the admin job. And then there's the hands-on keyboard work, which kind of, I would say we all do, right? If you think about it, like a Venn diagram, there's, you know, knowing how to build the things, but then these days, Admins very often also need to have almost a programmatic mindset and understanding of some of these concepts that didn't used to be a thing in the Salesforce world, like DevOps and release management. And now with Flow, really, there's an expectation that there's some programmatic concepts that are start being understood. And even, even things like debugging and, you know, software queries, those, you know, that's a very broad range. And I think, you know, going forward, we're going to need to start thinking about how we talk about admins different, probably how we train them, how we career path them differently, um, because that's not necessarily a realistic um, amount of work that um, we can expect somebody to have time to do, let alone excel in. And also the other part of that, when you talk about release management, is actually grouping functionality into releases. We're no longer we like add a field. Uh, we're building applications. So I mean, I, obviously, I run an ISV. We have a product management team because we think about releases. We think about a roadmap. We think about what, how we prioritize those changes, and uh, that should be the way that an admin's thinking about it, rather than going, okay, what are the next five things you ask me to do? Is actually how do I group those together? Uh, either because of a set of business priorities or around risk 
which is actually we can put some low risk changes in really quickly. So there are some things which are higher level than the order taking. It's actually now, how do I actually group these things together? That's the role of a product manager, um, a different set of skills, um, a different way of thinking potentially. Uh, and again, I'm not seeing necessarily very much in terms of training around that. Again, maybe that's maybe that's the next book. If, do you have another book in you? Well, yeah, I've actually, when Salesforce met product is is one that I've contemplated for sure, because I think you hit it on the head. And, you know, we've certainly seen a trend in the last couple of years, much, much like we have with the emergence of the business analyst role, right, is the role of product or product owner, product manager. And I can tell you, up until a few years ago, this was not a term or a role that existed in the Salesforce world. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I'd never heard of that. And most of my peers hadn't either. And yet we're really starting you know, to see that now that's starting to be a regular role. Um, and I think for all the reasons that we've been talking about is you know, there, there's a reason that somebody can't do it all. There's a reason that we need to be more strategic about what we're building, what we're releasing, how we're doing it, where the real business value is. Um, but I think to your point, there's there's a bit of a gap between um, a you know where's the training on this? There's no cert, right? Um, and I think as much as we're starting to see teams look and feel you know similar to any other team that manages part of a technology stack, um, you know with traditional software, there are still some things that are different when you're building on the Salesforce platform. And I think it's important for product teams to know and understand what is the same as traditional software and what's different. And, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes when we're building custom software, we kind of walk in with that clean sheet of paper and start thinking about, you know, in a perfect world, what do you want? What are you trying to solve? You know, while you can do that on the platform, the truth of the matter is, most companies are leveraging specific clouds for a reason because there's a lot of features and functionality that already exist. And it doesn't mean they can't be customized and tweaked, but we do want to leverage what's already there, what's been built, what's been you know used by so many other customers because we know it works in order to still have those things that that make software, Salesforce in particular, so valuable, the fast time to value, right? The, the ability to create something quickly and then iterate it as opposed to having to take a lot longer to build something from scratch. So I think that is an interesting challenge that we have right now as an ecosystem is, you know, not only finding people that have product management skills, but figuring out what's the right amount of training that they need. They don't necessarily need to be admins. They don't need to learn how to do hands-on keyboards work, but there's some context that I think we need to provide around the art of the possible, how the platform works. Again, what's similar, what's different than traditional software. So they can really um, help us leverage the best of the platform as we start moving toward more sophisticated ways to, to deliver change. And certainly the book gets takes people from that, okay, I've got my cert, I'm ready to go. Well, you're kind of not. You you now you now know how to configure the application, but you're not you haven't got a full, fully formed admin set of skills. So I think the book is 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 got to be the on ramp to all of that. So I mean you, you can't be a product manager. You can't have product management principles unless A, you understand how Salesforce works. That's the admin cert, but also a lot of the skills that you talk about in the book and some of the examples you give are all the things that you would see as part of that business analyst, uh, product manager type role. So what, what surprised you most? I mean, when you write the book, you've, you, you've got an, an audience in mind, you've got some uh, a particular marketplace. Um, then the, the, you write the book, you then get it published and people start buying it. What, what, what surprised you about some of the reactions? Um, first of all, I have to say, I, I couldn't be more pleased and, um, it's hard to put a book out in the world. I mean, you've done it, you know, this, um, that's what surprised me the most was just actually how hard it was to hit publish. Um, so having done that, um, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the reaction and, um, you know, just how it has kind of taken on a life of its own and how many people have told me that, you know, I heard about this from a friend or so many people that I finally had to buy it. And what's been, you know, most fun for me is 
the the calls and the DMs and the emails I'm getting with people telling me very specific use cases. Jody, you're not going to believe this. I had this issue the other day and it sounded exactly like this thing. And so I went and I read the book and then I went back and I suggested we should do a mutual plan, which is something that I talk about in the book or whatever that is. So that, that has been very rewarding. Um, also, it's been interesting to me um, how many folks are readers who don't yet have their first Salesforce job. Um, and what they have said to me um, on more than one occasion is, your book helped me figure out what that job actually entailed. They said I, I had done the trailheads and I, you know, I, I started, you know, understanding the platform itself, but couldn't figure out like, what would I actually be doing every day? Um, so a lot of people have told me that this has helped them paint the picture um, for what does a day in the life look like for a Salesforce admin. You can read it and then apply it in the workplace and go, hang on, this works, which I think that's really important that um, you've written something which which people can apply to their job and it uh, they can actually see it making a difference. So I'll tell you one of the biggest compliments I had was um, somebody showed me a trick, um, Franklin, um, who he actually, he does this with lots of books, so I, I shouldn't take it as <laughs> su such a compliment, but... <laughs> Mine was included. He actually takes books that he wants to reference to Kinko's and gets them spiral bound because they're easier to reference on the desk to go back and highlight or find something mm. you're looking for. So uh, I thought that was a cool trick and felt like that was quite a compliment. Um, but that that's really how I designed the book. So I, I mentioned in the beginning that, you know, it really was designed to be a reference book. I think that um, depending on where you are in your career, you're going to read it and get something different out of it. And it was kind of designed to say, kind of go through and, you know, see what resonates with what's where you are right now with what's going down on any given day. But I, my hope was it would be the kind of book that on those days where you're struggling with a stakeholder or you're feeling overwhelmed with your queue and kind of looking for some ideas of, you know, what do I do to kind of get out from all of this? Or what are some tips or tricks I can do to, you know, figure out how to move this project forward? Or if I have a stakeholder who's not engaged, what what are some specific things I can do to, to be able to either get them engaged or, you know, get this off my project list? I wanted this to be the book that somebody kept on their shelf and picked up and went, I think I read about that. Um, and go back to a dog ear and a highlight. Um, somebody else said to me, Jody, I'm so sorry, I've highlighted this so much. And I said, I, I can't think of a bigger compliment. To me, God. you know, a valuable book is one that is dog eared. It's, you know, water logged because you took it to the beach and, you know, you you take it everywhere you go and it's it's worn out. So um, that that those to me are the, the biggest compliments I can get. And it means that it's doing what it's supposed to, which is being a reference that people can actually act on. So is it going to be out of date with winter 23? Heck no. Um, no. And, and I'll tell you why. I wrote this book intentionally to be evergreen. And that was fairly easy to do because it's not a book of how to do Salesforce. Um, so I do reference some certain features and functionality as it you know pertains to an example that somebody might be working on or to you know show how we can constantly be mirroring um, or, or marrying Salesforce features and functionality with business pain points. But I did intentionally write it so that um, the, the lessons that are in there are going to be valuable, hopefully for quite some time. Um, although it took me so long to write it, I would be lying if I didn't say I had to go in and do a find and replace of process builder, workflow, a few other terms that have since changed a few times. So um, the way Salesforce rebrands, there's probably always going to be a few things that a few years from now aren't going to resonate anymore, but the ideas should should still be um, very, very um, uh, relevant. Yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're in, inevitably, they're going to be some of the bit, some of the, the terminology is going to change, but that doesn't detract at all from the, the important messages that are in the book, but also the very practical examples. And I think people, anyone who reads this in one, two, three, four, five years time won't come back and go, ah, oh, well, you called it that. It's not, people will look beyond that. We, we I wrote a book back in 2004 called uh, Common Approach, Uncommon Results. And people come up to me and go, I, I read your book and I go, well, I'm, 
actually, I'm sorry, I've written a number, which one? They went, oh, common approach. And I was like, well, I wrote that in 2004, but the principles are still valid. People are still using them. And I think, did we write it to be evergreen? We wrote it about some core principles and those haven't changed. I mean, the technology may have moved on, but still those skills of engaging stakeholders, think about a roadmap, work, talk about asking the question why, those are going to remain no matter what, what happens to the platform. I mean, Genie's coming out. So that will still require us to understand, well, why are you going to use it and how are you going to use it just because it's a new bit of technology? The book's fantastic. There's so much in there. Have you got like, one, two, three takeaways you, you think an admin should get from this? Yeah. So I think, you know, at the most basic level, it is the skills to recognize the um, the impact and the power that an admin has if they can transcend beyond the order taker role. And, you know, even, you know, going back to the conversation we had earlier, just letting people know that you don't have to be an order taker. This isn't a job. And in fact, you know, I want to start changing the job description where we start saying, asking great questions is a requirement or asking great questions is part of the day-to-day -day responsibilities. I want to normalize that. So I think, you know, that alone is is something that I've just seen has really resonated, um, and I'm so glad. Um, and then, you know, really going back to, you know, the second reason that I that I wrote this book is I want I want people to not only be able to add value and create value and make a difference inside their organization, but it's equally important. I want to give people the tools and techniques to have some business boundaries so they're not doing that at their own expense. Um, and, you know, whether that is learning how to say no sometimes, and, you know, I say do it, you know, say no, but you still get a smile and a thank you. You know, there's a, there's an art to that. That's a skill. That's not something that people can do right away, whether it's asking for trade-offs and, you know, learning to, to say absolutely if, you know, and talking about, you know, what what's the priority and what has to give. Um, and then as well, there's, you know, things that I think we're all, I always say we're culpable for our own busyness. And there's some things that all of us do every day that can, um, you know, add to the overwhelm and um, giving people some real life examples of what those are so that they start having some space and some margin to focus on the other things to, you know, there's a lot to learn in a Salesforce role. And, um, you know, I think, I think as a community, we, 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 we run the risk of burning, burning out our resources in this space. Um, and, you know, there's something that I talk about a lot called Ohana overwhelm, right? And it's not just the job, it's also kind of the expectations around the job of I need to do all the things and go to all the dreaming events. And now I need to speak at all the dreaming events and be on all the social networks. And that's a lot. And um, we're probably a little off topic here, but I, I also think it's important for people to know, like there's a time and a place. And, you know, if it works for you and it's it's something that at a given point in your career, you've got time for and room for, like hop in, there's so much value there, but it's also okay. And I talk about this in the last chapter of the book, you know, it's also okay if you're going 90 to nothing um, in your role and you're adding value there and you're also taking care of your life and the things that you need to do outside of work, like you can lean in and lean out. And, you know, that's part of the beauty of the Ohana is you can jump in. It's always going to be there. Take what you need, give what you can. Um, but, you know, part of, I think, a sustainable Salesforce role, whether you're an admin or any role, is we we got to find the balance. And I think we got to talk about that a little bit more as well, because I think there's a lot of pressure for people to think they need to do it all. Can I add one third takeaway, which is those, those two are great, absolutely on, on, on message. But I think the third is this is actually helping people understand how to navigate and grow their career. I mean, often people are tr trying to work out what a career path looks like. Um, and and they, they, they can't, there's not very much help outside. You've got, to, you've got to basically chart your own career path. And I think this actually gets people pointed in the right direction to understand, OK, what is where am I now and where could I get to? I think for all of us, this is, is about actually helping people plan a career. So you, you talked about uh, your passion here. So are we going to see you at dreaming events, at World Tours, at Dreamforce events? Are you happy to come out and speak? I would love to. So I'm willing and able. I feel like I have, I have a lot to share. Certainly would love to come talk about the book. I've, I've 
um, had the opportunity lately to uh, meet with lots of user groups, not just in the U.S., but um, various and assorted groups now in Europe. I'm going to be having a great conversation um, with the Irish team um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, yes, I am I am I'm all in. And it's important for me to talk about uh, a lot of these things that aren't always on the docket um, that I that I think really warrant some conversation. So fantastic. So the book is Rock Your Role as a Sales Source Admin. So the important question is, I uh, clearly I got my copy, but how do I how does someone buy a copy? Yes, thank you for asking. It is available on Amazon, uh, Kindle, and um, I'm also actually uh, working on an audiobook as we speak. So thank you, Jody, for joining us, uh, talking passionately about uh, about the book. Uh, so much value here. So my recommendation is go and buy your copy. If you're an admin as a newbie, if you're an experienced admin, if you're a business analyst, there's something in there for all of you.